What's up, everybody? What's going hey, down? Are we doing this? Yeah, Do we're so. we're live right now. Bet. Let me see. What's up, everybody? <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and take that off. All right, how's it? Did you just want to hear your own voice? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. All right. Um, Ooh, your reception is um, yeah, yeah you're not a little bit all right go ahead tour yeah can you hear me now but um i guess i'll pretty much i'll take over for AZ since he's All right, I was just saying they already know who we are, so let's get to introducing our guests tonight. They've been waiting, everybody's been waiting long enough. Sorry about that, guys. Don't be sorry, it's his fault. No, this is, uh, <laughs> my internet was lagging. We were trying to get my internet to go, and then this dog kept trying to bite my ankles. It was going crazy over here tonight, so please excuse us. All right, ladies, can you please introduce yourself? Go ahead, Amber. I'm Amber Chambers. Okay. And I'm Amber's niece, Jackie Eubanks. All right. And what encouraged you to share your story? What can you uh, kind of tell us what you do? <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about um, basically child sexual abuse that leads into adulthood at times. Um, I was abused for approximately 14 years by my stepfather. Um, I'm not the only one, there were a number of others. Um, and it wasn't until I have a niece. Oh, okay, hold on, let me get it together. When it ended with me, I was under the impression that it ended with me. Um, and it was just gonna be my cross to bear. Um, I would just have to deal with it because that would be a lot easier than trying to prosecute him um, or really do anything. Uh, it's, it's just easier to stay quiet. And so that's what I did when I was 16. Um, when I was, let's see, I was 36, um, I found out that I was not the last one. Um, I have a niece that he continued on with. And that's when I realized it didn't end with me. And if somebody doesn't say something, it's not going to end with her either. Um, that's what got me started. How about you, Miss Jackie? Um, what do you want me to say first? What encouraged you to the, mm. uh, share your story? Okay, gotcha. Um, you, your channel. Um, I watched a few of your videos and the way that, um, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but the way that you, um, you're hunting the bad guys, but you also, you, you care enough about the, the root of the issue to like, to try to talk to them and reason with them, even though, even though I don't think that that's, 
that's ever really going to work for any like true pedophile. I don't, I don't think there's any reasoning them out of the way they feel and think and the shit they do. But I had a lot of respect for that because my grandfather, Amber's dad, um, he hurt a lot of us in the family and, and hurt us bad. And even though he did, I still always recognized like the human part of him, if that makes sense and cared about him. There were times I hated him, but I always, always went back to caring and loving him regardless. So it was the way that like you handled yourself and the way you respected them, even when they didn't deserve it. That's what made me watch more of your videos, which I mean, it was kind of like a storm brewing. And I'd been telling Amber, you know, for some months, like, I'm so angry. I'm about to do this. I'm about to make this Facebook post. I'm about to get it off my chest. And I never did it until I got done watching a few of your videos. And I thought, all right, today's the day. And I did it. And I told absolutely every fucking body I know um, the truth. And um, the truth is uh, harder for me to admit, I guess, than for some people because um, I wasn't just an innocent little five-year-old girl the whole time. I was an adult when the majority of the shit happened with he and I, so. So it was you, it, it was him dying in prison and just a few months ago and Amber and I not getting the chance to have our visit with him, our visits with him and say what we needed to say to him. Um, I needed some kind of closure and that post did it. And then that led to this. Which I wanna thank you again publicly, you and Amber for being willing to share your story and help out others. Um, it means a lot to me and hopefully it means just as much to them. Um, which I believe it will. Uh, Amber, so, one, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -mm, I just said it means a lot to us. You go ahead. Amber, uh, can you tell a little, tell them some of what you do and uh, about the bill in Oklahoma, please? Um, so he was uh, sentenced, um, the niece that I was telling you about, um, so she turned him in and we went to trial and, um, when was that? Was that December of 20? It was December of 2017. It was. And during trial, I heard about a bill in Oklahoma and it was called the Hidden Predator Act. And what that did was it extended the statute of limitations to the age of 45, which would mean that um, I could press charges on him, that um, now that I was older, now that I was more, ooh, that threw me off. Um, Uh, now that I was older and less afraid and I realized that it didn't end, I didn't know how many more there could have been. So that bill, the Hidden Predator Act, would give me the opportunity to do my part to stop it. Um, it passed and it went into effect November 1st of 2017. He was sentenced in December of 2017, the beginning of 2018. Um, wow. I contacted the same detective, uh, told him that I wanted to press my own charges now. And so he did what he was supposed to do, took it to the, um, uh, sent it to the district attorney's office and then come to find out uh, press charges because it, spe it didn't specifically say um, retroactive in the bill. 
and because it didn't have one word in the bill, um, it was null and void for me. Uh, so then I found out who wrote that bill, um, and her name was Carol Bush. Um, she's one of the Oklahoma House of Representatives. I got in contact with her, and so I've been working with her for about two years now, trying to get the Hidden Predator Act um, changed to retroactive. Uh, yeah. this, this year, um, in February, just a couple of months ago, um, she put a bill, uh, presented it to the House. Uh, it was House Bill 3024, and the House passed it. Um, and then I believe it was supposed to move on to the Senate. And then all of this COVID-19 uh, began, and so that bill fell to the to the wayside. Hmm. But I'm not done. We're not done. You can be. Good. No, 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 that no. Persistence is the only way we're gonna get things done. Mm -hmm. Truly. Um, thank you for all you're doing for those in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it can be something national. Um, I just found out the other day that. The statute of limitations in Arizona is two fucking years. That's oh crazy. That, that's fucking wild to me. And um, <laughs> it, it, it blows my mind. Um, so I thank you very much for making sure that that stuff is taken care of elsewhere. Yes. Thank you, Amber. Big ups, Amber Chambers. All right. Uh, before we go too far, I wanted y'all to know that there's a lot of people in here saying that you all are very strong women for sharing your story um, and for what you dealt with. They're saying how brave you are. Um, just letting you know the words of encouragement that are out here for you. All right. Um, so let's go into who is Bob Brewer and how is he related to you? Uh, he's my stepdad, or was my stepdad. Um, he, he and my mother got together when I was, it was just before I turned two. And they were together until uh, like eight, nine years ago. I don't know, a while back. Um, and his oldest daughter, Bob's oldest daughter, um, Jackie is Bob's oldest daughter's daughter. She's my niece. <laughs> Bob's my biological grandfather. He's my mom's dad. And... How many, I'm sorry, hold on one second. All right, how many known relatives were victimized? Huh. Amber, take what we're at trial and add one. How many is that? At, so that's. So, yeah. I think it's seven. Weren't there seven of us at trial? Seven or eight, seven or eight known, like. For sure, known. No. Pos like positive, yeah. Um, and then there are that I know of um, two possible ones. Um, one was too young, s says she was too young to really remember. Um, but given the circumstances, um, and she was with me at the time that it happened, that some stuff happened to myself, I, I think it's safe to say that it probably happened to her. Um, not to mention all the kids that he had access to, like at church with Bible school and um, other young family members. And like he was, um, he was a big performer. Um, he was a comedian, played the guitar, wrote and sang music. Like 
So over the years, he had access to a lot of kids. Oh crap! No, I forgot about um, his next his next wife. Um, I'd say there were there were a good potential, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe five or six others. But that's I can't speak on them for sure. I don't know for sure. There were a lot. There were a lot of us. It was generational. Yeah, like. Like, like it started with one of his siblings. Yes, that's the that's what I was going to say. You said it better than I would have started with one of his siblings. And then it started with his first daughter, who's my mother. And then um, his second daughter and then his third Amber. Um, and then. One of at least then, four grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, there, it, there was a lot. All right. Were there any other relatives or friends you suspect were victimized that haven't spoke up or that didn't yeah. even get brought up in court? Uh, yeah, there were some that I contacted. Um, I think I sent you screenshots, but probably better not to put those up. Some that I contacted and um, some adamantly denied it. Some um, alluded to the fact that it happened. Some said that he had done stuff to them, but it wasn't really bad enough to speak on. But yeah, at, at best, he's been inappropriate with just about every female he's come in contact with that was, you know, underage. Uh, who was the uh, first known victim? And then we, we can go into the story from there. Jackie's mother. There's one before her that we know of, but that person that was the sibling of his that refused, that admitted, but refused to speak on it. Yeah, she wouldn't come to our baby cousins slash niece's defense, so, but yeah. Um, my mom got it, um, and I don't. I don't want to speak too much on her because she's not here for a reason. Um, but she basically got the she worst of was, everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like putting like, you know, gauges on people's like pain or experiences. But um, she definitely. I, I want to say she was neck and neck with you, Amber, on how long it went on. But basically from like, um, I mean, probably sooner, but from two or three years old to um, 16 is the last time that he raped her. And um, she thought for many, many years that he could have been my biological father. Um and then, so when she told me that, um, I think I was 16 and didn't find out the truth until I got to Oklahoma and asked him about it in person. And he laughed and he said, that's ridiculous. I had a vasectomy after your aunt was born. But I guess mama didn't know that. But yeah. Yeah, he terrorized my mother. All of, all of the people I love, really, that are female in the family. And how many sisters and brothers were there again? Go ahead, Amber. How many siblings does he have? Uh, no, how many children did he have? He had two biological children. Uh. And then when he um he and my mother got together um it was i was the youngest um of my two biological siblings uh i have a brother that's five years older than me and a sister that's eight years older than me 
And so when he came into the picture, my sister was probably 10 ish. Um, and he never tried with her, but her and I have talked over the years and we think that she was too old for him to groom. Okay, so um, so to answer some questions, um, he he is not in prison now. He died several months ago, but he died in prison. Um, it was 2017, right, Amber? The end of 2017 was the trial. Yes, he was. Yeah, okay. he was sentenced in December of 2017. Mm-hmm and was sentenced to seven years. And he died from cancer. Um, it was what? like two weeks shy of two years in prison. Yeah. He did do time and he did, he did pay a little bit while he was in there to the best of our knowledge took a little detective work to even figure that out. But yeah, they got a hold of him a time or two. Not enough, because he was still writing letters to his buddies. I um, actually got my hands on one of them talking about how he was in that, and I quote, the spa of prisons. So yeah, he really struggled. I remember I read that letter and uh, that's fucked up. Yep. Like no remorse at all. Couldn't yes. wait till yeah. his appeal. It was uh, it was like a weird flex from an old man saying that yeah. basically prison life is easy, that he's in the spa of prisons and, you know, thanks for, thanks for sending him money and da da da. Like no remorse. Yep. No, because he couldn't admit to those people that what he, like what he had done, like he was even in denial about it. He was in denial about um, how much pain he caused. And I think very much felt like um, it was time for everybody to get over it. Like, well, I mean, he used the words, how, how, how many years do I have to keep paying for this? Like. Yeah. So, wow, that's ridiculous to say after barely even being in there for two years. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just can't. Understand oh no, he 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 was making those comments before he even went to prison, just like within the family. Like, um, how long are y'all gonna, you know, hate on me and shit? Well, I mean. When you're sexually abusing somebody or multiple people for over 20 years, uh, you're going to have to deal with more than just a little fake self-guilt. Um, mm -hmm. But I also watched that video of the interview that he did with Victoria Lee or whatever. You uh, watched it? That, yeah. That freaked me out. Um, I can listen so, to like, people that are in here to it after, but yeah. oh my God, just listening, like I'm... <clears throat> this is, I don't know if this question is, I don't know, too weird or not, but I'm curious about his personality because, you know, I, mm. I saw that he's a, he's a, he's a good old Christian boy, you know, he's a good old Christian or he was or whatever. That's the, that's the role that he was playing to everybody yeah, in no. his life. <clears throat> he never but, was. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's, you know, that's the, that's what he wanted everybody yes. to think. And I, I saw that he, you know, he plays guitar and he writes songs and he considered himself a comedian mm -hmm. um, and a man of God and all of these things. And when he performed on her show, his jokes, his delivery, everything, even before I read all these statements from you guys in the court and I figured out that, like, you know, learn the whole story. <clears throat> it's just so he was so weird to me. Like his just everything about him was just so obscure, like just so weird. Like, can you tell me a little bit, like, about his person? Just even like I don't know, like I'm sure you know it, but if I bring up a joke about, um, you know, throwing things into this pit, 
and then throwing the railroad thing that was attached to the goat. And the guy comes and asks him, have you seen my goat? He was, you know, attached to this railroad thing that they threw in the hole. His delivery, and then after, how he just goes into the song, it was just so creepy and weird to me. Like, how was he? Like, he seems like the type of just weird person that's, like, dressed up as Santa Claus to make yes. everybody comfortable. Yeah. Yes, yes, it yes, yes. It me the yes. fuck out. It freaked me the fuck yeah. out. Yeah, that's exactly what he was. And now, like, I'm gonna, um, Amber, Amber suffered him so many years my my time like in his hands pales in comparison but i'll jump on this right now and she can add to it and tell you exactly who he was um how he came across on that video if you like go into live shows performances whatever with him people ate his ass like he was god and yeah he dressed up as santa yeah the way that woman was like it first of all, it struck me. It seemed like she wanted to fuck gut. him too, which was really weird. Dude, but because he made every woman. I've watched him. I remember watching him when I lived in Oklahoma. M- w- women and men both. The men didn't want to fuck him. I don't think, but the women, like he had them eating out of the palm of his hand with just a few sentences. And the men, it's like he had them in a trance. Like you're gonna do this. Period. This is what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like. When I got a job, he walked in and he said, my granddaughter needs a job. And this like millionaire oil rigging guy who owned the store was like, okay, Bob, like, you know, like people just bended to his will, but he was so fucking charismatic. And I know that may be hard to believe those YouTube videos are, while they are a good example of who he was, they're kind of not, you had to, you had to be with him in person to know it. Like he... He overwhelmed you. He overpowered you mentally before you even realized what the hell was going on. And him being a massive God didn't help. Like, especially when you're, when you're a child, I mean, adult men seem like giants anyway, but he was a giant. Like, Oh yeah, no, I saw his hands. I, I went back and screen recorded when he walks into this lady's studio um, the doorway is already really high and he ducks down and like, you know what I mean? Like he, he's huge. And it, it, and it was, you know, obviously, you know, nothing weird for him because he's used doing it. But when you uh-uh. look at somebody, it's like, you got a picture, like, you know, he was like taller than like a big, huge basketball player. You know, when you see him yes. stand next to like regular people, just the way he had to yeah. duck down to that door. So when I heard about your guys' experience as being children and him being six six. And seeing it just for like this is awful to say, but just seeing how big his hands are after hearing the stories, it just killed me. You know what I mean? To think of a Amber, child go ahead. and hands that there it is. big. And y'all describe yeah. that pinky ring, ring as being so yeah. large that a quarter could be thrown through it. Yes. That's how big his fucking pinky was. So those hands that y'all are seeing right now don't look that big. I was going to have Amber tell that she does it better. But yeah, that pinky ring, um, you could drop a quarter inside it. He didn't have hands. He had fucking bare paws. Like, they were huge. And you could feel how strong he was, even in his 50s and 60s. Like, if he held your hand or he grabbed you or something, like, you could fit. I don't know how else to explain it, but, like, it, it even when he was just simply like holding the door open for you and like touched your back, you could feel that like, if he wanted to, he could crush your bones with his hands. Like he was just a monster. He was massive. He was fucking the strongest man I've ever seen in my life. Even as an old man. Yeah. Yeah. So his size intimidated advantage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, always, Always, if there were little girls around, myself included, they were on his lap. Like, he had no shame. He acted like nobody else was in the room, like there were no other adults. Like, and there's there, I saw a picture of him holding a baby too. And that's me. Yeah. His, his, yeah. Okay. Well, his hand is the same size as your entire torso. Not, not, oh, no, 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 no. There was, that's there not was me. Another one. That's not me. Okay, not that. One. There was one of him sitting on the couch, I think, and his That's hand me. is over her okay. belly, and his hand is all the way from your neck, you know, all the way past. Mm-hmm. Her. Like it's, 
you know, a foot long. Like it's crazy. Was there a brown couch? Do you remember? Oh, Cause I don't know what pictures Amber is sitting. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that's me, but there is one of me as a baby. And like yes, yeah, hand comparison. It's just crazy. Yeah. And then to hear yeah. that he started with some of you at the age of two to three to think of how big of a two or three year old and the size of this guy's hands. That was like last night when I started reading this stuff to go through it. I'm like, I, I can't, like, I need a break. Like I can't do this because it's, I don't know. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Amber. He was, he just demanded presence without demanding presence. Everybody loved him. Um, He, and I feel strange even saying this, but he wrote some really good gospel songs. Um, And he was actually a pretty decent singer. Um, It's just a damn shame that that talent was wasted on, on a hypocrite. Um, And the pinky ring thing, he, that was, um, he was famous for that. He liked to show people, um, he liked to show that off. Um, We would go somewhere. um, We used, when I was a kid, he would do shows at, um, um, oh, what is it called? Like a, like a retirement home or whatever. Um, and my mom and I would make, you know, we would go on Easter or, you know, for Christmas or something. And my mom and I always made some sort of craft to hand out to, you know, the residents. Um, I mean, the, I don't even know why he did it half of the time. Um, But he would show these random people. I don't even know how he brought it up in, in a conversation, but like as part of his show and he would, you know, take his pinky ring off and um, pull a quarter out of his pocket and have somebody look at it and then drop it through his ring, kind of giggle about it, put his ring back on. And when I was a kid, I remember thinking like, holy crap, like, oh my God, you know, that's so freaking intimidating. Um, And it wasn't until I was older that I think it dawned on me that that was the point. That was the point. Absolutely. To be intimidating to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With a smile on his face. To everybody. To, right. to like you said, like you said, like um, just I don't know, just like when I watched that video, I got more of a a grasp on how intimidating and charismatic and fake and like you said, like in a trance, you know what I mean? Like it just seemed like everybody, just like a like I don't know, silly, but like a vampire or something, to where you're legit like hypnotized. Like I've known charismatic people like that that have just done some you know, unreputable damage to people. And I saw that in him right away and it made me sick. I'm so so glad that you saw that because that plays so much into my story. Like, I'm so glad that you saw that. And like I said, I saw that before I even read all of this stuff. As soon as I saw it, I recognized and it was, it was triggering for me because of other people that um, have affected my life, and when I saw that, it just, I was like, I need to take a break, because, like, I literally can't even handle this, and I saw other people in him, and it just, I don't know, can you guys hear fireworks right now? I'm mm. sorry, I'm in the hood, and my neighbors are lighting off fireworks. <laughs> if you can, I'll, I'll mute it when I don't have anything to say, but it's loud. I don't, I can't, okay. I don't know okay, about, good. like, the viewers. Right. If you can't, then they can't. So we good. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I saw the video and um, yeah. So you said you wanted to say something that uh, had a connection with that. Um, just uh, no, just basically like that. I'm that I'm very glad that that you at least recognize that right off the bat because um, like his um, quote unquote 
charisma and like um, the way that he would impose his will on people so easily plays a big part into why into well not not just for me um i can see the comments when i want to and i know people are asking like um why our mothers stayed around him and stuff um so i don't want to speak for them but i can say that it takes gut takes a fuckload of guts um to break away from him and um and then What I guess we'll get into deeper later, my part of the story is um, takes a fuckload of guts to say no to him, too. It's like it's not even an option. It's like you you, you just can't. You just can't. All right, can y'all hear me? I feel you on that. Yes. We hear you. All right, cut it out. Um, so I, do you want to start from the <clears throat> beginning of your story up into the point of conviction? Who? Uh, either. Amber, you want to go first since your stuff happened first or no? I'm good either way. I don't. I don't really, I guess I don't know really how to tell my story. Um, I know that my first memory, um, it wasn't of him doing something to me. Um, My first memory, uh, I think I was about four years old. I know that it was before I was in school and I was at my grandparents' house I had been drawing, like coloring, whatever. My sister was there, again, which is eight years older than me. Um, and she basically walked up behind me and she seen what I was drawing. She immediately like snatched it out from under me and like kind of yelled at me, what is this? And I remember, like my chest hurts right now, I remember panicking um and trying to tell her it's nothing it's nothing it's fine it's nothing um i don't remember what i drew like i don't actually have that memory of what i drew um my sister remembers it very well it's apparently very vivid to her still um all i'm gonna say is that uh apparent i didn't know that Stick figure, stick figures could be vulgar. Um, gotcha. He was inappropriately touching, and my sister kept probing, and I told her, Shh, "We can't, we can't tell." And she's like, "Amber, you have to tell me what's going on." And I told her that it was a secret, and nobody could know. Um, because I would be in trouble. Um, next thing I know, she, um, she went inside the house. She grabbed the phone. She called my mom at work. Um, next thing I know, my mom was pulling into the drive. Um, my sister got in the car with her and they left and I was absolutely freaking petrified. I knew at that moment I was going to die my family was going to die. We are all going to die. Um, it was the worst, the worst of the worst feeling I think I've ever had in my entire life. Um, like you snitched without snitching. Yeah. 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 I mean, he had that power over you and you didn't even, like, oh my God. Um, Sorry, that's crazy for a four year old to be able to to put together without even knowing I was I didn't know what was going to happen but I knew that something was going to happen and I knew that it was going to be very very bad Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next thing I knew Bob was gone and he didn't 
live at the house anymore and I didn't understand what happened. Um, he was gone for about a year and then I came home one day and he was there. And I think that that like year break was the most childlike childhood I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. um, and so it wasn't until adulthood that I found out what happened. Um, so my mother went to his job. Um, don't worry, a crime was not committed. It probably should have been, but a crime was not committed. Um, my mom went to his job, um, basically held a gun to his head. Uh, he swore that I was lying. Um, she kicked him out. And then he supposedly uh, received therapy. To me, that's an admission of guilt. Um, Damn right. He received therapy and then he came back. Um, but I want to pause for just a moment and say that I hated my mother for years because I thought to me the way that I felt was she when he came back she chose him over me a hundred percent um and it wasn't until I was an adult that I I learned how this works I learned how mm -hmm. he works and you you know, like child molesters, pedophiles, whatever, they they groom the child, but they groom the adult as well. Yeah. When he met my mom, she was a single mother of three children. Um, she had been in abusive relationships and he came in as her savior because she had a baby that he could violate. Well, and and he's, the, he's the charismatic, predatorial, manipulative person to do. You know what I mean? She, I hate to say it, but she was the perfect candidate. The person, she was. the perfect victim. She, she was. was. It's, it's textbook. She, like it's, it's, it's awful. And she recognizes that um, now. Um, now, and that's the really shitty and sad thing about it is because. You know, it's really easy to point a finger at, you know, someone's, you know, the parent. Um, how could you let that happen to your child? How could you, you know, how could you let him back in? How could you? Well, easy. They were they were already in too deep. It was, uh, you know, it was done. Yeah. There, you know, I, I told I, I feel exactly what you're saying. And he had her um, so thoroughly convinced that he would never, ever, ever do anything, ever. And so she let him back in. And and that's, that's the story. That's how it happens time after time after time, child after child. Um, yep. It's this repetitive this this cycle because and everybody wants to keep it a secret for him that's right for him yep. for him for him because and everybody you know, loves him when i was 16 when it ended when it stopped the way that it's i was a drug addict um i became the most massive addict alcoholic um we're not going to go into everything that I did, but I was not a good person. <laughs> uh, but you know what? It was anything for an escape, anything to escape. My oh, so he couldn't, he couldn't even fuck with you anymore because you weren't a good girl. So that's how you got out of it. No, he still did it. Oh. Even though I was high, even though I was an addict and a drug addict and all those things. No, I still had a body that could be used. Um, and that's exactly what he did. 
Um, and so to make that easier, because I knew I couldn't escape this giant beast, you, you do what mentally. you you do what you have to to separate yourself. And so if that's um, if that's meth, or if that's alcohol, or if that's heroin, or mm -hmm. if that's whatever it is, you have to separate yourself. So that's what you do. Um, so I got you're numbing yourself for the inevitable pain that yeah. you knew was coming, essentially. And that was the most peaceful part of my childhood was when I was high or when I was drunk. And yeah. And you were high and drunk because of him. I, I, I have a hard time blaming that on him. I feel like that's wrong because I chose to do those things, but I chose to do those things because of the situation that I was living in. Exactly. I think the uh, the government knows that shit, and that's that's I think because of the money that they get from drug addicts, from alcohol, and from all of that, it's partially why. I just honestly, I believe they give no fuck sometimes about these sec these laws in regard to sexual victims. There are so many drug addicts and alcoholics that are as of a result of some kind of sexual, mental, or physical abuse. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's honestly off topic, but that's one reason why people that have never gone through anything related. Uh, whether it's drugs, whether it's somebody in your family being sexually abused or whatever, they have a hard time relating because they've never seen it and they've never seen what it's like to have to escape it or go through it, whether them themselves or see somebody that they love to be able to understand. Just, you know, like when I say like people are like, when people are just like, oh, just quit, just, you know, just quit doing drugs or just That's quit. Easy. You know what I mean? Just leave, just leave. If it's so bad, then just leave. It's so hard for people to understand. Um, that's why I think it's important for people like you guys to share your stories because, like, I don't know, I'm not even going to speak anything, you know, in detail about mine. I'm just not comfortable going into it. But um, I have mad respect for you guys being able to speak out because if maybe if anybody is like that listening or they eventually listen and hear something like this, it's like you don't understand, but. You've got, you've got to try to understand when other people are telling you that you can't you can't just leave and you can't just quit because it's not that easy. You were, you know, almost seasoned and you know what I mean? I don't want to say it was your destiny, but your experience and everything adds up to where that's why the shit is important to stop and prevent this stuff from happening to people. And like you said, you thought you were the last one and you weren't and it just kept going. So it's not only like he's affecting him and everybody else like him. They just keep affecting so many people. So, 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 so many people until they're caught or until they're exposed. And all those people are going to endure, you know, just, just mental stuff. Um, you know, just anxiety, mental health issues, drug problems and then those people also not all times <clears throat> but it seems to be after watching and listening to all these people th people that suffer from that tend to become predatorial themselves and then it just keeps going and it's a never-ending circle so it's like you know what i mean like you gotta like you gotta try to stop it but it's not that easy to just leave or to just quit you know Sorry, I'm rambling. I'm, I'm no, um, you're fine. But um, it's just, I hope that there are people that don't understand that hopefully will understand after hearing enough people like yourself, um, you know, talk, like talk about things like this and open up, like, you know. And that's the it, it thing is, I don't expect. Be, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm done. I don't expect people to understand. Um like someone that's never done drugs. I don't expect them to understand, well, why would you do that? Why would you go to drugs? Why wouldn't you just tell someone? Well, you don't just tell someone because now granted 
when I was, when this was found out for me, I didn't tell I was discovered um, by my sister. Um, and then when he came back after that year, um, you know, instead of, and I don't remember how he groomed me prior to that. I don't remember how he intimidated me. Hell, it probably could have just been, I was four years old and, you know, two and a half, three feet tall. And he was six foot six and 207 pounds. That's intimidating alone. Um, but when he came back, um, it's the, it's how they manipulate your mind. Um, you know, the defeated. first time he you're you. defeated. Yeah. You're defeated. You thought that you escaped it, girl. I've literally, I'm not going to go in detail, but I've been there when they leave and then they come, you you come home from school and you're, they're back and you're like, it's a total mind fuck. Like, oh my God, everything's about to change. And then he had me convinced that, well, your mom said that, um, if she ever found out that this was happening, then she was going to send you away this time. Yeah, it's you, all your fault. I mean, you don't want to go, do you? I mean, where, where is she? I don't know where she's going to send you. Mm -hmm. That scares the shit out of a child. Yeah. The mother that I thought, I mean, didn't, you know, chose him over me. I already had an issue with that, but now she's going to send me away? Mm-hmm. And well, yeah, I mean, he's in, he's in charge, so everything he says is what goes. I was 30 years old before my mother ever knew that. She never knew that that's what I thought. She had no idea the shit that he was saying to me. Ever. Wow. It's, it's just, they play one against the other. Jackie, your turn. Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Yeah, I believe where? she stopped that part where she was 16 and then she was oh. able to get away at that point or 17. Yeah. I was 16 and I came home high and angry. I think I had been awake for a couple of days and I came in and I said, we need to talk. And he was sitting in his recliner and my mother was sitting on the couch and I grabbed a chair from the dining room table and I brought it in and I sat it down in front of him. And uh, I said, are you listening to me? And he said, yeah, yeah, what is it? You're never gonna fucking touch me again. And I mean, his eyes just got really big, like, oh my God, like, what are you talking about? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, out of body experience. I, I, don't, I don't know, drugs, were good to me that night. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not promoting drug use. I'm just saying it gave me, <laughs> I grew a set that night is what I'm saying. Um, and I told him who he was and what he was no longer going to do to me. And, um, and then I left. And how did he, how did he and your mother react? Um, well, I didn't really stick around for that. I mean, he was in denial, you know, um, what, are, what are you talking about? I, I, honey, I don't, I don't know what, I don't understand. And I was just very adamant and very straightforward. You heard what I said. Do you understand? Do you understand me? And he just kind of sat back in his chair and I'm going to be honest. And I don't, I'm not sure I even looked at my mom. I mean, I know she was in the room because I seen her when I walked in and when I grabbed the chair and when I sat down, but whenever I was done and whenever I stood up and I walked out the front door, I don't think I looked at her. I think I came in. You were talking to him. You were talking to him. That's why. And I said my piece and I left and, you know, I continued my drug addiction, but you know what? I wasn't coming home to sleep and being molested in the middle of the night either. Yeah. And, but then I left home, I don't know, it probably wasn't six months. I left home and I moved, I moved away and I haven't really lived at home since. So nothing ever happened after that day with him? Um, nothing, nothing 
to the extent that it did prior to. Um, he would do some creepy shit every once in a while. Um, you know, he did one thing that used to drive me so crazy. I would go to leave um, and he'd be like, okay, you know, give me a hug bye. Okay. And then he would like really lick his lips uh -uh, before uh -uh. he'd walk up to kiss me. And I would always turn my head. Um, and it's like freaking slobber on your face. And I was so yes. grossed out by it. Yes. And he did it on purpose. Oh, God, yes. 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 It was the intimidation. The You know, he still had... Oh, oh my God. He still had you right here. Right underneath yeah. his thumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jackie, I feel like you want to elaborate on that. Um, yeah, I can. Um, so the reason I'm sorry, I'm taking notes, things that I need to say. Um, so the reason that I was so yep, yep, yep is because that was actually um, one of the it was one. It was the second. Um, it was the second encounter I had with him, I think, under the age of 18, um, that he did the same thing. Now, I need, need to remind, like, everybody that the majority of my shit with him, like, my, like, mm, the damage he did, again, came after the age of 18. I was um, 20, turned 21 while I was there. There's a whole lot in the middle, but my second interaction with him, um, I think I was like 12 or 13 and um, he lived in Oklahoma and I live in, I live 900 miles away. So he'd come in to visit his family. I saw him, we had a quick visit, whatever, I go to leave and he followed me out the door um, and I was going to walk home because Ironically enough, his childhood best friend that he came to see um, every time he came to, to my state, um, his childhood best friend also happened to live in my neighborhood. So um, there's a house full of people inside. There were even neighbors in like playing in their yard to the left of us. And um, he followed me outside and there was a big tree in the front yard and he's he said, well, let me get, let me get one more hug from you. And he had one of his arms like raised up, leaned up on the tree. And that's like a common theme. I don't know why, but like, I don't know why, but like every, it, almost every like, um, what's the word incident with him? Like he had an arm raised up, leaning over. I don't know. I'm not really sure why. I know for me, like as a kid, it made him look even bigger and more intimidating. Yeah, but, um, intimidating for sure. Intimidating yeah. Factor. Yeah. And he leaned down to kiss me and I went to turn my cheek and um, I didn't turn it fast enough. And he caught me on the lips and I thought, OK, for like the first quarter of a second, like in my cl close family, the people that I see on a daily basis, that's not, you know, a big deal. Then he stuck his tongue in my mouth and yep, I froze like, are you wait, what? This is really happening really and this is your grandpa this is your grandpa. yeah my bi my biological grandfather yeah um and he kept his tongue in my mouth he was like very forceful with it slobbery as fuck clearly did not know how to kiss mammal if you're listening i don't know how you put up with that shit um it was <laughs> It was disgusting. It was vile and disgusting, and I was sick, and I stayed sick for a while after that. Um, I didn't speak to him on the phone for, God, I can't even, I don't know, a, a while. I couldn't bring so myself was, to so And then over was, time. So he was trying to reach out to you then, and you just were ignoring him? Well, we were we were speaking a lot on the phone um, at this point, because by this point, I just recently left my mother's custody and moved in with my dad, and... Um, my mom wouldn't allow us to speak to Mamma or Peppa either one because Mamma was with Peppa and 
Papa was a bad guy. He was a monster. And by this point, Mama had learned that um, I think that she very much thought that the abuse stopped with her. Um, I know that she very much felt like she. Okay, let me not speak for my mom. But anyway, um, so when I was a little girl, um, aside from the first incident with him, he and Memo both, which Memo's wonderful. Don't please don't think that I'm saying anything other than that. But like he was to me as wonderful as she was. The visits from them were wonderful. Hey, like who else has a pap all this big and tough and Santa Claus looking and and I had no dad for for like the first six years of my life and his attention was wonderful, you know? Um, so yeah, so I was forbidden to speak to him for years and then I moved in with dad and it was really easy to find him. And I started talking to Amber, my aunt Amber and Mamal and Peppa. And yeah, we spoke on the phone a lot. And after that kissing at the tree incident, oh, the picture you've got up now, he's got his arm leaned up. That's what he does. Don't know why he was doing it there, but that's what he does. Um, anyway, um, see, so yeah, I quit talking to him for a while because it, it threw it, it freaked me out and threw me off. And then over time, I convinced my 12, 13 year old brain that that's not really what happened or it was an accident, you know, it like he did, he couldn't, he couldn't have possibly meant to do that on purpose. There's no way. Um, yeah. And so the first, the first, um, the first, do you want me to keep talking or do you want me to address something specific first? Are oh, you good? You're good You're so good. far. You're good. Okay. So the first interaction that um, I had with him, my mom, and I believe it was her boyfriend, um, I, maybe it might have. Amber, do you remember? It doesn't matter. Whatever. Mom came with us, like, significant other, and took us to Oklahoma to um, spend time with Mamal and Papa and Amber. And um, and I remember my sister and I, who's a year younger than me, I was five at the time. Um, we woke up early before everybody else, and we had to use the bathroom. And um, so we go to the bathroom, and their bathroom didn't have a door. It had like a, what I remember it as is kind of like a shower curtain thing hanging as a door. Um, and you could kind of see through it. You could kind of see that there was somebody in there. Um, but I opened the curtain just a little bit and it was Peppa and he was naked on the toilet. And we were like, oh shit, you know, and, oh, sorry. And, you know, slung the curtain back and he was like, no, no, honey, it's fun. Come here. And, he stood up and um, he opened the curtain back up and me and my sister, four and five, are standing there with this giant looming over us, but naked. We'd never seen a naked man before in our lives at this point, let alone Papa. And he started, um, he had this sick, sick fucking smile on his face. And his eyes, I can't, it's almost like an abusive husband, like when they get those crazy eyes, like they're about to fuck your shit up, you know, like they're really about to come for yeah. you and you know that there's nothing you can say to get through to him. Okay, so it was like that only different. It was like a sick look. And I knew in my five-year-old gut, something bad was fixing to happen. He started um, playing with his penis in front of us. I was the one closest to him. He grabbed my hand and I was just like frozen I froze like sh in shock and he put my hand on on his um on his penis and started rubbing it back and forth and um this went on for um a sh very short while um before I jerked away and he said no no it's okay it's okay and he was smiling the whole time um, and when I jerked away, I took off running back to the room that my mom was sleeping in. And I realized my sister wasn't with me. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I ran back through the house to where the bathroom was. And she was standing there. And, like, I can still see her to this day standing there looking up at him. And he was um, just, like, 
steady checking it like he's standing in front of his wife to a four-year-old and I grabbed her by the arm and we ran into the room and where my mama was and I in my statement to the detective in the case I told them that I never we never told anybody ever but come to find out when mama found out about this at trial she said no you guys did tell us you came in there and you told us what happened and that's why we packed up and left that day like I don't think that mom ever addressed him about it she may have I don't know but um so from that point on I guess that let my mom know yeah he's still up to his fuckery and it's not gonna stop and you better keep your girls away and she did she tried her very best now to make it make sense and it's still not going to make sense to a lot of people, and that's okay. Um, but who I need it to make sense to, it will. Um, so my mom divorced my dad when I was two. I'm going to run through this real quick. Um, he beat on my mom, and he beat on, myself, on me. Um, my baby sister was too little at the time. He never beat on her. She divorced him whenever I was two. Um and then he was basically out of our lives until I was six or seven um, because not only had his drug habit started, but um, he had also been outed as a pedophile, too. And when my mom found out, she refused to let us see him. Um, I'm not well, she sure. Was she was overprotective. Yeah. I mean, she was protective yeah. because of Absolutely. what she went through yeah. as herself. Absolutely. And my mother tried her damnedest. Like she really did. She tried her damnedest to keep us safe. Um, so, okay. So I'm not sure why that fizzled out and what made her or anybody else think that it was safe for us to be around him. But um, I can't speak on um, what happened before it came out that he was that kind of person, but I can say that he actually never laid hands on me in a sexual way or my sister um what he did do when i moved in with him at the age of 12 was beat my ass like a man like like yeah. a man um yeah. until i was 18 and let's see so i'm getting back to the point but um okay so dad starts beating on me i don't know maybe close to a year before i saw before the whole tree kissing incident with Papa, and then, um, so naturally okay. at your age, you get your dad back into your life, mm -hmm. and you get to see your grandpa, who mm -hmm. honestly, like, just naturally at that age, you're yearning for a father figure. You My literally God. need it. Yes, and you literally it, needed yeah. it, and you go back like, and you see your yeah. grandpa all the sudden they come back into your life and you're like yay and then shit like that happens so yes. naturally you excuse it and you say uh this is my fault yes. or it was an accident i'm just imagining yes. it yes absolutely which is why absolutely. a lot of people aren't gonna understand like when people are like like why did you allow this to happen you didn't allow it to happen it's your brain chemistry it's your age it's everything well, that you need in your life I think that, I did allow like, it to happen, but yeah, like I was, I was starved like for attention and yeah. it shows like in every other, I lost my virginity, um, willingly at 12 years old. Um, when I was 16, I got pregnant by my best friend's stepfather, my mom and dad literally, um, literally forced me to have an abortion like literally like if you say one word when we get in this clinic like you're not doing it you're not it's not happening you're not running your life um so that was pretty traumatizing but like i'm 16 and he's this funky old 40 something year old man and and there's nothing attractive about him but just the fact that i was getting attention from a man you know like yeah. And it was good well, they, intention. I people, thought. people joke about daddy issues. It's not a. It's not. It's not a fucking I mean? it's, joke. It, it's not a joke. It's a real. It's a re like girl. It's a real fucking thing. Yes, it is. I um, I understand that, and and he and that's why I say like when he chose who he chose to be his wife, 
and the family and the people that he chose, he chose for a reason. You know what I mean? Like he picked y'all out like on purpose because he knew it would work out in his favor. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, um, probably one of the most like, um, mm, probably one of the most, he was the, the most successful like sociopath I've ever known. Like he had that shit down to a science. Like he knew. When you said, when I heard his name, I, I, my very first thing was this dude has to be on Dateline by now. And I looked it up and he's not, you know what I mean? Like that was my Mm -mm. first thing is like, how the fuck is this shit not like, where's Chris Hansen? Like, why is this not on Dateline? Like what is going on? What's well, for one, he's fuck? dead, but for two... Yeah, but still, they still, dead, they still cover the they shit. Kept him, they kept him quiet. Like, they kept it quiet. Like, his family... And that that's a lot of what pushed me to make the post, too. So, AZ's channel gave me the courage to do it. But the fire to do it, I was furious. His whole family cut us off. All of us victims that testified against him. Like... Yeah. Do you understand that at the time of trial, like two of us were pregnant. We all lived in different. St- well, many of us lived in different states. We had babies at home. We had jobs we were leaving like and his family members are really sitting there thinking that like we all just ganged up to come and fuck his life up at what? Sixty something, 70 years old. Like, really? They all legitimately think that we're lying. And that's the biggest like we insult just- in the world. He had them in their trance, you know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah, they had, like, his, like, the loyalty, like, it's, it's well, fucked. Yeah, and, and one family member that tried to play mediator told me that, she said, Jackie, try to put yourself in their shoes. Imagine having to come to terms with the fact that your brother is capable of something no. like this. No, Imagine no, no, having no, to come no, to terms no. with the fact that your fucking grandfather is, uh, is capable of raping your mother and hurting your aunts and your baby cousin and your, your, like yourself, like what, fuck you. That's hard for you. Live a day in our lives. Fuck out of here. I don't know. Same type of person that says it's, it's hard to go visit a a sick loved one in the hospital because it's too hard on them. It's the same fucking thing. Some selfish shit. So whatever. It was like a good riddance. Like here's all the shit. I need to say, and I'm getting it off my chest. And just so you know, like, he was so pathetic that um, it wasn't just one type of female. It was any type of female. Like, it didn't matter. Like, he just needed to, like, rock somebody's world and fuck them up and control them. Like, and this is who you're defending. But, yeah, that's why he's not on Dateline, because you got churches full of people defending him. You got family members, tons of friends all over the country that he's made with his bullshit comedy and stuff, there's very few of us that are willing to even say, listen, this is who he is. And there's like, for each one of us, there's like a hundred other people saying, no, he's not. So I don't know. You know, we were just recovering addicts that were just making shit up. Yeah. 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 So of course you don't, of course you don't matter. You're not real people. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not real people because of, oh my God. All of us grew up, all of us but one, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Amber, all of us but one grew up to be drug addicts, all of us but one had teenage pregnancies, and all of us but one, or maybe all of us did, enter into abusive relationships as adults. So yeah, like, we're all raised by different women in different states, you know, like, who's the common denominator? It's him. You can't tell, you can't Mm -mm. Anyway, so yeah. Um, okay, so um, so okay, so living with my father the way he was, and um, dealing with all that anger that I had, um, I fought my way through high school. I was very, very angry. Didn't give a shit. Just a miserable, miserable person. Um, then I got pregnant at eighteen, and I had my son, and. Um, I was working at a nursing home as a CNA. I got hurt at work uh, and got prescribed pain pills. And that very quickly, like stupid quick, turned into IV drug use and sleeping with 
some of the most disgusting men you've ever seen or smelled in your life for drugs and money. And, um, like I sold my soul to the devil. And by the time that I went to Oklahoma at 20 and then turned 21 soon after, um, by the time I got to them, um, to him, um, I was still using, um, he took, my kit, my rigs and spoons and shit away from me the minute I got out of the truck. And um, Mamma made it very clear that my ass was going to church whether I liked it or not. <laughs> and um, I jumped right into this new way of life. And it was wonderful for like the first half of three months. It was wonderful. Um, all of them, like Amber and Mamma and even the babies, my baby cousins including Bob, they all like wrapped their arms around me. And um, I I had done 90 days in rehab, not long to them. And I swear to God that one month with them, I felt like healed me more than three months in rehab. Um, I didn't recognize that. Um, I wouldn't say like grooming is the right word. I was an adult. Um, it's called and I'm it's very much not, not, no, not when it started. You were not. But, yeah, but that was very, it's not like he had years and years and years and years. To... Yeah, but he had, he had your trust. He was your grandpa. Your dad was not there. You were groomed. Right. Y'all talk uh, on the phone. Like he took advantage of mm -hmm. that. That, I'm sorry, yeah. that's my perspective as an outsider. Mine too, um, as an insider. Got you. Okay. Yeah. You were you were groomed. So um so I had to wear dresses to church, which wasn't my thing. And he would take pictures of me and he'd say, and he'd make me look at the camera and he'd say, Look, like there's a real lady there. And um because it didn't feel like one, you know, I feel like garbage because of all the things that I just done. And um, he um, he at one point closer to when the the bullshit started, he bought me a ring from the pawn shop that he worked at and he put it on my right hand and it looked like an engagement ring. But he said, I said, what's this for? And he said, because you deserve you deserve beautiful or you deserve pretty things. Um, and it felt kind of wonky at first, but then it felt good. Like, wow, thank you. You know? And um, he would spend countless hours like trying to teach me. He bought me a guitar, trying to teach me how to play it. And, like working on my singing voice and telling me just beefing me up, gassing me up, you know, like telling me all the things that like he could you tell to hear. He, he could, yeah, yeah, and he knew what to say to anybody without even knowing them. Of course, he knew what to say to me. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, guys, y'all, viewers, this is where it's about to get real. Um, if you don't, if you can't stomach um, this kind of stuff, maybe check out now. Um, so we're about... I'm so horrible with like mem memories with like timelines, but I want to say that we're about halfway through my three months. And by this point, I'm completely comfortable with him. Um, he had opened up to me any question I had for him, like, why the fuck did you do this? Why did you do this to my mom? Why'd you do this to my aunts? Why'd you, why'd you do this? Um, and he would answer every single question I had. And he told me the reason he did it was because he was looking for affection, female affection. And he didn't know how to ask for it from adults. Like he couldn't get it the way he needed it from adults. And I know that all this is bullshit, but the fact that like every answer that he had for me um, and the fact that he didn't deny all the stories that my mom had told me made me feel like since there's truth in some of this, it must all be true. And he must really be a changed man and like different. Yeah. Um, but then 
So one day I bought, I didn't buy, I signed, he told this man that he knew that I was going to buy his house and that I was going to rent to own. And that's exactly what this grown man did. He pulled out a contract and, and I signed it. And we were going to um, look at that house one day, but he was like, let me show you the show. No, I don't know if it was the woods. No, it wasn't the woods to that house. I don't know. But some woods that that man owned, um, there was a gate that had to be opened and he had a key to it. Um, and we drove through that gate and we got out and we went walking. Um, and it was pretty. And, um, and then I remember thinking, okay, what there's not like it's Oklahoma, you know, like there's not, it's flat. It's, there's nothing to see what are we doing. And, um, and then I turn around and he's got his arm up on a tree and he, he had that look in his eyes, um, the same one that he had when I was five. And um, I knew something bad was coming. I knew that, like, my brain was telling me, screaming at me to run. Um, but I was paralyzed, like, my sister was when she was five, four, and when I was five, um, I couldn't move. Like, I just, I couldn't, I thought, and it's not, I don't think it's because I was scared that time. I think it's because I was like, it was like, dun, 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 like every mm -hmm. fucking thing he's been saying to you all this time, all this love you thought you were getting, it was all fake. You just all, you realized it all at that point, but you're paralyzed. Yeah. So, um, so all the, all the laugh that he spoke into me and all the good things that he said, um, it was to lead you here. Yeah. And, um, it's okay. That first time, um, I won't go into any details unless, uh, like somebody on here somebody on here like needs me to or um, has a question, that's fine. Um, I'm pretty much an open book, but, um, and that's why I'm doing this by the way, is because I've spent a lot of time looking for people to connect to. There's a lot of people that speak out about, you know, like child sexual abuse, like you're innocent, you're five or you're six or you're eight or you're 10 or whatever, it's a lot harder to say, um, yeah, I didn't. Hold on, on. Real, quick, real quick, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. Hey, if you mm. fucking trolling in this chat right now, oh, send them out of here, real talk. This ain't the time for that bullshit. Get out. <laughs> I don't see why people don't get it. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, I, it's okay. I, I, Go play somewhere else. It's okay. It's fun. And as far as the questions, um, we're going to get to them uh, at the end. So go ahead and post them. Okay. I am taking note of that. Well, what mod is in here playing around? I don't know. I, I don't know. They're not trolling about you. I don't worry about it. All right, for sure. I appreciate you, Creek. Well, then what are they talking about? They're just It's talking. just some stuff that has nothing to do with this. Some, yeah. I don't know. Bullshit. Okay. It doesn't matter if they are talking yeah, about yeah. it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, we good. I just had to address that real okay. quick. I'm sorry. Okay, cool. No, but it's talk fine. About, talk about so, as much in detail or as little detail as you want from the him putting his hand up on the tree to what happened. That's up to you. Okay, so let me back up and touch on this real quick. I should have said this in the beginning. The reason that I wanted to do this podcast with you guys is because there I've felt this has been my biggest, darkest secret for so many years. And, and there aren't a lot of people that are willing to admit that um, that they've gone through like the adult side of things um, 
there's definitely I've I've yet to find anybody to like connect to and be like like yeah bitch I've been through the same thing it sucks huh you know like you can find plenty of people to relate to on like child abuse so nobody's willing to say they um they didn't make an effort to fight back mm -hmm. as an adult with their biological whatever father grandfather mother whatever um so that's why i'm doing this um i need people to know that um that i know that it's a lot more common than most people are willing to admit and um there's a reason i know that it's not really relevant can touch on it later but um but that's why i'm doing this because um because because i need to like one let the dead weight off and two let people out there like know that um like it like if it's happening you're not the only one and if nobody okay. else in this fucking world will yeah exactly will be there for you i will um because that shit, like, that's, that secret has fucked me up worse than anything I've ever gone through in my life. And that's, that's, that's legit. That's saying a lot. So, okay. So and back to the story. To, before you go into your story, I just want to add on because we're going to, I'm keeping track of your story. I'm, I'm supposed to be here to keep everything on track. But before mm -hmm. you go into your story, um. I want to say, like, maybe at the end of this, whatever you're comfortable giving out, whether it's your email, your Instagram, or whatever, in case people that mm -hmm. are listening do want to reach out to you and speak to you, um, yeah. that we should do that. And okay. I had one other thing, and I lost it. But, um, yeah, but, I mean, just because you are brave enough to talk about it and you want to let people know it's okay, it's not their fault, and if you do want to reach out or you want people to reach out to you, you can um, provide whatever you feel comfortable with at that point. Okay. That works. But, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Continue with the story. I just wanted to get that out there no. just so it doesn't get forgotten. No, thank you for doing that. I appreciate so you'd it. Be surprised, yeah. You'd be surprised the people that would reach out to you in, in the emails and such after hearing something like this. And it's like, this sounds like so corny and stuff, but it's like, Oh, I remember what I wanted to say um, to to reach back, like how like you're speaking about it now. Like I um, never say never, like, you know, it, it's never too late to talk about. But just for example, like how Amber came in contact with the, you know, the 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 20 year limitations or whatever, or the 40 year limitations. I can't remember what it was. And then AZ said in his area, it's two. So sometimes mm -hmm. it is too late. So as corny as it sounds, I, I wish it would be, I remember in elementary school, middle school and like the whole dare thing and they come to your school and do silly skits in the auditorium and teach you how drugs are bad and da 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 da. I wish that there would be something, some type of program to reach out to kids because nobody wants to listen to parents when it comes to predators and behavior like this to acknowledge at a young age. I that's why I give mad props to you guys for reaching out and talking about this because there's no programs that I know of. Um, I know people are trying to implement stuff like this in school, but to where it's, you know, it's fucking cool to be aware of child predators and to acknowledge that behavior, at least be knowledgeable about it. Because to be honest, nobody, nobody wants to listen to their parents when they're between the age of 10 to 16. That's when, you know, whatever your parents say, you don't give a fuck. And then, when you grow up, you're like, okay, yeah, what they were saying was right. But when you're that age, mm -hmm. you don't care. And you want to listen to everybody but your parents. You mm -hmm. know, whether it's somebody that's had experience or somebody that's cool, young, and hip. Like some, I don't know, some fucking YouTuber or something. But I, like, I wish that this would become a thing. Like, I, you know, the whole catching predator thing is becoming a movement. I want it to be a movement to be aware to where they don't even have to, you know, to where they don't even have to come in. When they come in contact with a predator, they know they're a predator, so... There's not even that chance of them being able to get caught up in their trance and everything that this man has done, you know? Like, I want it to be just preventative measures. Like, I just wish that this could become a thing as 
far as preventative yes. stuff goes, you know? Yeah. Cause and that's, that's, the and that's what I think you guys, yeah. And I think you guys speaking out about this kind of stuff can help people, people or whatever. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So sorry. That's my thing was like the limitation thing is like, you know, it, it can be too late, but so all that aside, sorry, I had to throw that in there and your contact no, info at the end. I don't want to forget that, but let's continue okay. with your story in the woods. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the arm on the tree and the look on his face and that fucking smile. Um, and for a minute, like I said, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and then very quickly knew what was going to happen. And um, I will tell you that, like I said, I mean, like, I'll give more details later if necessary, but um, I'll just keep it to this. If not, um, the first time um, I did not fight back. Um, at all. I froze. Um, he kept turning my head to look at him and I could, I didn't see him. I didn't see him. I, I learned, I learned, um, back, back where I'm from while I was doing drugs um, how to kind of disconnect from situations that you don't necessarily want to be in. So, so, I, so I didn't hear the things he said. Um, I, he kept turning my face to look at him and I didn't see him. Um, and I just, I just laid there and, um, took it and I remember the man that owned the property I guess maybe he saw that the chain or something was off his gate I don't know but he started driving up to where you park before you get out to walk and we could hear the car and um I jumped up and put my dress back on I guess it must have been I don't know, a Sunday or something. I don't know. And I felt like a robot walking out of the woods with him. I walked behind him and I took that ring off my right hand that he gave me and I threw it over my shoulder. Um, and then we ran into that guy and I didn't speak much, just acted like things were fine. He was showing me around and we got back in the car and he put his hand on my leg and he looked at me and he smiled and he said, never mind, I can't with the things he said, I can't. Like I can tell you graphic details about all the things he did, but it's the shit that he said that killed me the most, most of the time. Um, To say that, um, to say that I felt trapped and disgusting and vile and um, hopeless and um, like back at square one minus a million, like I just I fell apart inside. I don't know. Like I, like I knew then that like, this is what it was going to be from here on out. This is what, what it was going to be about. So that's me and him at vacation Bible school, um, where he had access to bukus of innocent little girls, um, in that picture. The second time, um, wasn't long at all after the first and um my baby my baby cousin and I the one that actually ended up growing up to prosecute um we shared a room 
um, and sometimes shared a bed, sometimes not. Sometimes she'd sleep on the floor, sometimes she'd sleep on the couch. But that particular night, she was in the bed with me, and he came in there in the middle of the night, and um, he was in nothing but funky-ass tidy whities and... Um, before I even had a chance to get on the bed, I was like, N no, please, God, anything, like, please, like, n like, not, please not here. Like, if Chloe, or if my, if my grandmother walked in, if my baby cousin woke up, um, like, I was begging him, um, I couldn't stand the thought of her walking in and thinking that what she saw was um, wanted on my part. I guess you could call it consensual because I felt like, I felt like I didn't have um, really a choice to fight back. Later, I kind of half-assed did, um, but he, he didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't listen, he didn't care. And that time I cried because I remembered my memo saying that she sleeps with or slept with one hand on him um, to make sure if he got up out of the bed, you know, she would wake up too. And I was terrified the whole time and did whatever I could do just to make it end faster. I didn't, I couldn't. The That's only way that consensual. the shit could have. That was not consensual. I mean, that was you doing it okay. to protect your cousin. That's probably going to take another like 33 years to come to terms with, but it yeah. pretty much, yeah, feels like because I'm a fighter, you know, because I don't, there's nobody, I, there's nobody I won't fight, but I couldn't fight him. Um, but I did. I did. I didn't think he was messing with my baby cousin at the time. Um, I really did believe that he was done with kids, even though I now no longer trusted him. I still thought, you know, at least she's safe and I can't. There's no possible way for me to tell Mamal about this and I can't just take off and leave. Hell, I'm. 900 miles away from home and nobody back home wants to see me because I did some horrible shit before I left. I stole from everybody I knew just to get money for drugs and had lost custody of my son, um, which I got him back two years later. But um, anyway, this went on, um, I guess... I guess about the next month and a half minus two weeks, um, he took me to pick my son up where we're from. And he insisted that we had to go alone, that he had business to take care of. And everybody else, including his wife, stayed behind. And that trip was hell. Um, he got a hotel hotel room, and he definitely didn't need to. Like, he would brag about how he can make that drive without stopping. Um, when we got to my boy and we got him back, um, he left me alone the whole time, the whole time that I had my son with me. And at the end of that two weeks, my mama and my little cousin – Maybe both of them, but I know one of them went with me to take my son back to his dad, 900 miles away. And then um, I saw my mom that day before we left back for Oklahoma. And um, it's okay. It's okay. I just, just, um, I just wanted to stay, like, I couldn't let go of her, right. like, I, I hugged her and I couldn't let go of her. You didn't want to go back. She was, yeah, she was safe, you know, like, but I knew I couldn't stay.
because um I was still a threat to everybody I loved. You know, nobody they watched me do the rehab and I came out and fucked up immediately. So what's this That's like month and a half, you know? Um so I got circumstances. Yeah. So anyway, I went I went back to Oklahoma with Memo and um I need to throw in something I forgot to. Um, I started getting high almost immediately. Um, by this point, I knew how to get to Tulsa. And um, I had paid attention to um, the people in the family talking about what parts of town were the bad parts of town. And... Um, I remember one day specifically coming in and sitting down on the couch and I was just out of my head, nodded out so fucking high. And my memo, I could see how upset she was. Like she knew I was high in her house, but I couldn't tell her why. Like not that they're really like now, obviously, you know, that's not how I deal with that shit. Getting loaded only makes it worse. But then that was my only escape. And I didn't know how to tell her that. Um, make it make sense to her. Um, depression set in from hell. And I just spiraled down. Um, I stopped. I stopped doing anything. I stopped cleaning the house helping doing my part, um, pulling my weight. And um, I think it was probably due to the shit that he was doing. But again, I couldn't explain that to anybody either. And by the time I left Oklahoma, the way I left, um, I got really sick the last week I was there. Ended up in the hospital for like, I want to say like seven days. They never figured out what was wrong with me. Um, but, like, I lost, like, it was wicked, no shit, like, 20 pounds in a week, and couldn't eat, couldn't drink, whatever, my throat kept swelling up, and I wasn't getting any better, and I really thought I was gonna die there, and I started writing letters home to my son and my family, and my mom was trying to get me flown back to my state, like, in a helicopter, and put in the hospital there, and that wasn't happening, and Bob was coming every day after work to sit with me. And um, I remember, I don't remember a lot about that week in the hospital. I was so sick, but I remember feeling so shitty about myself for being so glad to see his face. Like, cause I did it. I really did think I was dying and I didn't want to die alone. Um, and I felt like I owed him something for being there every day. Like, oh my God. There's a million things that, that I, for years, would talk about. Like, he did this and he did that for me. Nobody's ever done that. And anyway, um, the last couple of days I was in the hospital, my paternal grandparents came. Okay, that picture is me. me and my mom that day that I had that I had to go back and and don't get me wrong like a lot of the um a lot of the tears were because I had to leave my son again but yeah. it's okay it's okay it's okay okay so um my grandparents asked me if I wanted to come back home and I said, fuck yes. And the day they let me out of the hospital, we went to Mamma and Bob's house and I just threw shit in like tubs and threw it in the back of my truck and left some shit and went over to Amber's and got the rest of my shit and um, I remember him standing on the porch when I was leaving. Um, he had his arm up on the like, po like, post on the porch, crying. 
he was crying because I was leaving. Mm-hmm. Like real tears. And he, want, and he wanted you to see that. Mm-hmm. And it worked. It cut like a knife, mm-hmm. even though he had done all this shit. And man, it gets deep and it gets wicked. It, it Like, however bad it sounds, I promise you it was worse. Even though all that happened, like, it still, I still felt like I still cared about him. Like, I didn't want him. Like, you were leaving I, him. I was running. Um, mm-hmm. But when I left, my baby cousin, the one that nobody thought was being hurt and the one that grew up to be um, a strong as fuck teenager and the only one to prosecute him. She was standing at the gate. She had opened it for us to get out. She had ridden her little bicycle down there and she was maybe like seven years old. And she was standing there with her arms like wrapped around her body, crying and shaking and And begging me not to go. And it's not your fault. Begging me to take her with me. And I couldn't. But I didn't know that. Um, you I guess while known. I was there, like, I was giving her a break. Yeah. And she knew that when I left, it was going to stop. And it did. You got so many people in here saying how strong you are. Yeah. You could not have known that. There's no way you could have known that. And you can't blame yourself for I know it's easy to because you feel responsible being the older one. But you had no say over that. You you were unaware. You were ignorant to that. Mm-hmm. And you were still a kid yourself, and he had you in a trance. There is no way. You got a comment saying you were loved by all of us. Very strong with hearts mm-hmm. that they are appreciating your story. Thank you all very much. They're saying, please, please don't blame yourself. It is not your fault. Okay. And you end up coming in, you back your baby cousin up, right? You help through this whole thing. You're proud Um, of her. Yeah. Um... So I got the call um, from the detective, and you got to remember, like, at this time, I hadn't spoken to Bob in, like, I don't know, seven years, I guess. Um, and um, they said what they needed, and... Even though I had no contact with him, that was because I went on to have, at that time, um, two little girls and was pregnant with my third during the trial. Um, And he, that motherfucker, was not getting a chance with my girls. So I had zero contact because I knew, I knew eventually, you know, he'd get me like he got everybody else before. I'm changed. I'm different. And um, not my kids. You were doing what your mama did, but even harder and even better. Yeah. So, um, but that no contact with him. um, It didn't mean that I didn't love him or care about him. I did still and managed to twist some of the things that happened um, in my mind, like, into into whatever blame myself a lot whatever um so I, so I loved him and it gutted me to do it 
And I did not want to see him spend what I assumed to be the rest of his life in prison because I really thought he was going to get a lot longer than he did. But it ended up being the rest of his life in prison anyway. Um, And what I said in my statement and what I said on the stand to his face was that I know the DA asked me, how does it feel to be aiding in the prosecution of your grandfather? And I said, it feels miserable. Um, I love him very much, but I love Chloe. I'm sorry, my niece, my, my baby cousin, and all his other victims more than him. And um, I answered all their questions and I helped put him away. Um, I don't think I love him anymore, but um, yeah, yeah, she mattered more. Um, And all the ones that like, I uh, knew that it had been hurt and that I loved, that they, they mattered more. And this was their chance. And I didn't feel like I needed um, to see him be put away from me. But I also very much believe that pedophilia is like a, it's like a, um, it's like a disease or something. Like their, their brains are different. There's no cure. There's no fix. And I, the only way to protect future victims is in his case, and I think most cases, to not give him the chance. And we took the chance away from him to hurt anybody else. Because at the time, he had, like, remarried to another woman that had several granddaughters. And even in their pictures on Facebook, he had his arms around him and stuff. So yeah, it wasn't even a question. Um, I owed her that much and a lot more. Well, you were very brave for that. You got so many People out here encouraging y'all. Um, I don't know if Amber, you could check your messenger. I don't know if you can too, uh, Jackie. But I sent y'all some of the screenshots of um, the chat, so y'all can not just hear what I'm saying about this encouragement, but for I'm afraid to mess it up. <laughs> I can see comments, the live comments. Wow, y'all are awesome. Wow, this isn't at all what I expected. I told you there'd be nothing but love, girl. That's why I wasn't trying to go off and talk too much, but that's why I said whatever contact information you're comfortable with sharing um you know you're definitely gonna get some love feedback thank you guys thank you all right amber yeah, get in here. It's your hey, turn. Hey, hey, Amber. Hey, Amber. <laughs> hey, Jackie. I'm really mm-hmm. you. And I don't care what whoever said to you before. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I've seen a number of people make comments about... Um, Thank you for having a voice when I don't.
you made a good wave. Jackie, I'm proud of you. I didn't think that you were going to speak as much as you did. Uh, Thank you. And there's so many people that Do what? Oh, right now. Cut mm -hmm. now. Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, you we're here. here. Okay. All right, so. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, once again, Amber, Jackie, I want to thank you two very much for um, sharing your story. Uh, we had a few uh, questions. Somebody wanted to know how old was he? How old was he how when what? what? Okay, I've, he's cutting out, but I'm assuming... How old was he when he messed with you, Amber? How old was he when he messed with you, Jackie? And this uh, is this is a stepdaughter versus uh, granddaughter. The AC's caught not like well. Um, okay, so Amber, you go ahead because I'm gonna have to do some math. Uh, you, oh yeah, well I'm gonna need a minute for that too. I don't have that many fingers. Yeah. Okay, let yeah, me see. Yeah, math, math is hard. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, holy crap. <laughs> Shit. I'm trying to see. Um, can you look on your um, this picture you guys have up now? Does it have his birth date? It's all blurry. Yeah, and I can't 24th, read it. Twenty fourth, nineteen forty nine. Forty nine. So uh, he was thirty two yeah. when he started with. Me. Oh my god, I'm 32. What the fuck? Let's see. He was born in 49, so. Um, 2019, he would have been 70. In 2019, he would have been 70. He was 70 yeah. when he died. Yeah. So, he was around 60 when the adult shit with me happened and he was um 50, 40. like this is morbid but his birthday was yesterday i know Shut isn't that up. great really he was born in 49 crazy. yeah it was yesterday he was born in 49. I was born in 87. I was five the first time, like the first encounter. I don't know what the math on that is. My brain is like fucked right now. How old were you? You said your first encounter? Five. And I was born in 87. So it would have been 87. Yeah, I was born in 87. 92. Uh, so 92. 92-ish. 49 uh -huh. to 92. Would be 43. 50 to 43. Yeah, 42 to 43. 42 to 44, okay. depending on his birthday and the month it happened, but yeah. So he was... Okay. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. 48, something like that for the next time, and then, yeah, like, pushing 60 yeah. for last time. Oh, my God. And people under a state, uh, people under esti uh, estimate old men as well. Don't, don't underestimate them. I don't care if they look like fucking Santa Claus. To they sure know. enough do. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Um, when I left Oklahoma and I came back home, within weeks I met my, he's still my husband, legally. Um, <laughs> Technically. <laughs> yeah. And sorry, I was doodling. Um, I met him and um, we... He asked me to marry him um, four weeks later. We were married six weeks later, and I was four weeks pregnant at the time that we got married with my first daughter. Didn't know it. Um, and he is 27 years older than me. He's older than my dad. He's like 10 years older than my dad. And now he's almost 60. Um, 
which is disgusting. But in my defense, he didn't look at all his age um, when we got married. Now he very much does. Now he reminds me um, of that. Uh, very much so, like physically, he's got like a long white beard, and he wears fucking overalls, and his oh fucking God. dentures clank around in his mouth, and it's just oh. too much. Oh yeah. Dude, I'm serious. It's disgusting. People, people say age ain't nothing but a number, but just give it a few years, it's shown up as. Yeah, well, back then he was like on Harley and like had jet black hair, and he was like this beautiful, like beautiful man brown skin and green eyes and shoo I didn't care then but anyway like all jokes aside like the whole like like daddy issue thing um it's been pretty evident since like day one yep anyway it's not a joke it's a real thing it's a real thing it's a real thing yeah Y'all got any more questions? Yes, yes, yes. One just came across. Miss Amber. All right. So the organization <laughs> the organization that you're working for and what you do, how can people donate? How can they provide funds to help you out with getting this bill situation taken care of? Um it's not an organization it's the oklahoma house of representatives it's the government okay. um and How they take your money off time <laughs> <laughs> um it's it's not a money thing my mission with How can we help all, with all of this is to say that. i want I want to say the right thing to empower someone to tell their truth. Um, Jackie did not have a voice for a very long time. I did not have a voice until I was 37, 37. I was 37 before I could stand up. That's ridiculous. I was 16 when it stopped. He had 20 years. That's a 20 year gap that he could have hurt God knows how many people. And I'm not blaming myself. Well, I am. The thing is, is that if I would have had the support I needed, this, if I would have had the support needed, I could have come forward a lot earlier and he wouldn't have had that 20 year gap to hurt other people. He wouldn't have had the opportunity to do what he did to Jackie. He wouldn't have had the opportunity to do what he did to my other niece. What people don't realize is one, it's very hard to be a victim. It's even harder to be a survivor. But the hardest part is finding your voice and stopping the next from happening. Um, People are my People are my platform. Um, that's, I don't want anybody's money. It's, it has nothing to do with money. Um, I want people to use their voice. I want you to contact your state representatives. I want you to contact your senators. I want you to find out what your statute of limitations is in the state that you live in. And I want you to beat down the fucking doors until they change it. Damn right. Yeah. You you want some activism in this bitch. I don't want just Oklahoma. 
they're not just pedophiles in Oklahoma. They're not just victims and survivors in Oklahoma. They're in Arizona. They're in California. They're in New Mexico. They're they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, last year, I contacted um, 99 Oklahoma House representatives, 48 senators, the governor, and the attorney general. Um, and I have, for lack of better words, harassed and harassed and harassed until you will hear me. Um, it took me a very long time and a lot of other hurt individuals to have a chance to say something, to have the ability to say something. Um, and so that's my job now. That's my mission. That's my, that's what I live for is to encourage the next person to, oh, you don't know who to contact? Where do you live? Let me help you. Um, you want me to help you write a letter? I will help you write a letter. Um, the next time that we have a bill that goes before the house, um, I plan to have as many people as I possibly can to pack that place. Um, it's easy to, you know, vote nay on something when it's not, when you're not faced with it. It's a hell of a lot harder when yep. you've got 600 survivors standing in front of you um, right. to sweep it under the rug. And did you know that in 2019, there was, I realize you probably don't know this, but in 2019, there was a bill in Oklahoma and it was to, um, it was to retroact um, the statute of limitations. And do you know why it got thrown out? It got thrown out because of prison reform. It got thrown wow. out because they thought, well, if we retroact this bill, then our prisons are already overcrowded and we're not going to be able to keep up with it. Are you kidding me? Right. So, yeah, it's okay to go rape your daughter that's seven. It's okay to go, you know, forcefully hold down that 11-year-old boy. That's okay because we don't have room in prison for them. So I want to incite rage in people. I want you to imagine that it's your daughter, that it's your son, that somebody hurt your child. And then I want you to go um, knock on a door. Uh, send an email. Something, something. If you don't speak up, you're part of the problem. And that yeah, I right. was part of the problem. I was part of the problem. I was part of Jackie's problem. Um. And I don't beat niece, myself up. Your nephew, your That's right. That's right. And I'm not blaming myself in that type of way. I'm blaming myself as um, I learned from it. And so now I'm doing everything that I possibly can to fix that. Sorry, uh, that was great. No, no, that was great. Uh, that was needed to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question here. Ladies, this is from Backyard Play. Ladies, knowing what you do now and with the survivor strength you hold, what would you say if you could to your young child selves in this times of trauma? It's easy for me. Listen to your mama. <laughs> I don't think that there's anything that I could have said that would have changed anything. I mean, for my specific situation, I don't think that there's anything that could have been said. 
All right. Well, what if it was a child, say, in your position now? Um, Trust your gut. That sick feeling you get, it's right. Yep. It's right every time. And you don't have to have something to tell somebody that this person's done. You can just say, There's, they're creepy. They got you know, they got creepy vibes and trust that always because yep. it's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, when you're three, four or five years old, you know, you don't know why and you can't put in words, but you know, there's something wrong going on. You feel it in every part of your body. Yeah, I think that goes for, you know, parents that make their children love a certain adult, it goes to have a certain adult. Like, you know, I think kids can pick up on certain shit like that, and parents should not make their kids go hug adults. Shouldn't make them go speak mm. to adults. There's a difference of being respectful and forcing your kid to be uncomfortable um, in a, an adult that they already perceive to be a threat to them. Yes. In the case of I just have to mention this because it kind of touches on what you just asked. Um, the My niece, Jackie's cousin, that um, finally got him convicted, um, her m mother, my niece's mother, um, called me one night and she said, uh, Long story short, she told me that it happened to her too, to my niece. I said, how do you know? Apparently my niece had just disclosed it for the first time to her mom. The mom knew that I had also been abused by him. So she called me. And so I said, okay, did you call the cops? And she said, no. Are you going to call the cops? And she said, well, I sent her to go take a warm bath to like calm down and relax from, you know, everything that just happened. Um, when she gets out, I'll ask her what she wants to do. And I said, no, this is why you're the mother and she's the child. If your child comes to you and your child says, this person hurt me, then that's when you step up as a parent. It's, and I, this sounds harsh, but it's not, it was not about what my niece wanted at that point. It was about what needed to happen. Yes. Yes. Um, so I told her mother that if she did not call the police by morning, then I would call them for her. Um, so she called the cops. And so here we are. Mm. You don't kick them out and let them come back a year later. You don't kick them out and let them have access to the next child. Right. Yes. Right. That's how I kind of got in the last situation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my molestation happened just that way. You know, adults not believing a child wind up in a household they don't belong in. And boom. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's perfect for them. They play it like they they're don't? crazy. Is it that they don't believe the child, or is the it's, is it because the adult is so charismatic, like Bob Brewer, to where it's not that they don't believe the child? There's a there's a doubt in their mind, I, but but they're so fucking mesmerized or whatever by this person or loyalty or family or whatever it may be that trumps I said the doubt. Both. It is, I'd but say it trumps both. it out, and that's why it pisses me off. Um, there's, there, there is charisma, but there's also adults that want to place a blind eye because it makes them uncomfortable. 
Exactly. And that's a large exactly. population when it comes to this. It's either, okay, fuck charisma. There's people that just simply don't like being uncomfortable, don't like having to yeah. admit to shit, don't like having to confront people. And so it carries on. And it's those Maybe. people that could be the ones that are strong and changing the people that are wooed by the charisma. And so it's just a fucking cycle. It is. It's a circle. It's a cycle. And it's, <clears throat> I hate to say, but I feel like it, it's somewhat of a, it's a, I don't want to say a cultural thing, a family thing, a, let, let, you know, let's just keep it a secret and like handle it, you know, within the house, but it doesn't get handled. It just gets hushed and pushed aside. And that's what, that's what kills me is it's not that people are complacent in the situation, but they're just overwhelmed and like you said uncomfortable and most people are not comfortable being uncomfortable but that's what ignites change and you know what needs to be but people are uncomfortable with that you know I think there's a lot of people that um, that they don't want to bring shame on the family um, right. Exactly. That's what I was saying. Like, like a cultural, a, a family, a loyalty type thing to where you can't even turn it off almost. And it's like a, a sheep, like a sheep, uh, like way of thinking, you know? Like where they know it happened, but they're not willing to acknowledge it because of mm. this this tie that they have in it. Yep, and it's unfortunate, but hopefully, people can be strong enough to to come out of that. And that, like, that's what needs to happen when there's when you know something's going on, and like you said, it like a a kid comes to you, and like I know that experience from a child when you have to grab your little brother and sister's hand and say like, no, we're not gonna go for a car ride in your two seater Corvette, Grandpa. Like, oh, why don't Oh, you and your sister don't want to mm -hmm. come? No. Why? Well, because we don't like cars. We're girls. We're not going to go with you. You know what I mean? It's like your your grandpa. Like, it's your it's your grandpa. Like, why wouldn't you go with your grandpa? You don't know what sex is, but you know in your stomach. Like you said, you know in your gut. You don't even know what sex is, but you know something is wrong. But you're scared. Yeah. You're scared to tell mom and dad because you don't know what's wrong, and you don't know how to explain it. But you know it's yeah. wrong. You know yeah. you're uncomfortable and you're scared. And that's supposed to be your grandpa. He's supposed to protect you. Or He's not dad. supposed to be imposing. Yeah, exactly. But your grandpa's taking place of your dad because you don't have a dad. Your dad isn't there. Like, I, like I get it. This shit is fucked. It's fucked. But you're scared to tell mom and dad because, like, you don't want to snitch on your grandpa. You don't even know what you're snitching on because you're too young to be able to know that shit. But you know it's not okay. Yeah. And it's like, just it, it comes back to the just even Amber making that, you know, sketching that, that drawing that she did as a kid. She said she doesn't even remember what it is, but, you know, she didn't even know she was snitching. She was just drawing as a kid with stick figures, and she didn't even realize how graphic it would be. It was just whatever was going on inside her mind, because that shit was affecting her as a child, you know, like drawing that shit as a kid. And you see that stuff in horror movies. You see, you know what I mean? Like, kids draw shit because that's the way they express stuff, and it's like for that to be overlooked or pushed aside. And then she had the relief of him leaving. And then all of a sudden he's back after all of that. You know what I mean? Because not only did he groom her, the mother was groomed before she was even fucking there. It's fucked. It's fucked. But it, it, it can be prevented it can be with stopped with people like with people like you guys speaking out it, it it can be it can be i think y'all like 
AZ, you, you, your work, your team, your channel, for me, um, which I think is like one of the first things I said to you, I saw the opportunity for prevention, like with what you're doing, um, which is like the only, it's like more important than, mm, no, more effective than um, trying to repair the damage after it's done. And that's why I had like so much respect for you and your team. And um, it made me feel like, like I call you Superman now because you are like there is at least one good man in this world Besides my teenage son, he's going to be one too, damn it. But at least you exist. So, you you too, Tori, all of y'all, like, I I appreciate very much, like, um, shoo God, I've been sick to death about this, but. Me too, this turned out great. But sharing your your platform like yes how many people do that yeah it's massive and and coming at this bullshit from all like all angles like it shows me which i already knew instantly anyway but it shows me that like you guys are really in it um you guys are really in it for um the right reasons and you az saying that it's not it's not your platform. It's not just your platform. Like you caring so much and trying so hard in so many ways to make a difference makes a fucking difference. It made a huge difference for me. If a month ago. It's the change. Yeah. Yeah. I could have never done this a month ago. It's those ripples. So for every person that does something like AZ, giving us Mm -hmm. this platform and doing what he does. That's a ripple and a ripple causes a ripple, causes a ripple till it's a wave. It's a ripple effect. I want to tsunami these bitches. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I am not shit. Thank you so much for the kind words, but I'm not shit. And I, to be honest, I didn't realize the depth this went. I didn't realize the impact it would have in getting started. All I thought was, okay, I'm keeping these fools away from kids. But um, it's done so much to where it's, I mean, y'all have blessed me just in being so open and um, mm-hmm. vulnerable. And it's motivated me to keep going regardless of all the hate that I get, regardless of this and that, you know, it's so encouraging um, to know that it's actually making a change and helping out. So I thank y'all very much. Stress that helping out, stress it. More than y'all know. Exactly. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Are you are a wonder woman to me. Exactly. Shit. I can't talk about my shit. Y'all are something else. We have a baby B that says, thank you, ladies, for sharing your story. Um, Amber, did you want me to go ahead and drop that for people to reach out to you? Sure. Let me help you. Okay, just making sure before I'm ditty. I mean, I think, I think yeah, maybe it's there, not understood. I have that. a in the. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think it's not understood <laughs> that I'm all in. Um, I have zero shame. I will share my story to anybody that will listen. I will take any platform that's given to me until this shit changes. Somebody has to do something. 
So we need everybody in every state to reach out, basically. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. If you're interested in talking to Miss Amber, reaching out, um, either reach out to Tori or I's Instagram via DM, and we can provide you with that Facebook. I'm not comfortable posting that here in in the public chat because some of y'all are some damn fools. So just to keep everything safe and legit, I'm going to do it that way. It's okay. We can handle them if they come our way. Me and Amber got this. I got to worry about it. (laughs) (laughs) You ain't even got to worry about it. No, we got to protect y'all too. Um, Okay, so so I just told y'all. Predator Poachers, Predator Poachers, OTR on Instagram, and Predator Poachers, Tori on Instagram. Um, I don't know what your current email is, AZ, but mine is Predator Poachers, Tori at Gmail. And if y'all got a YouTube account, then y'all have a Gmail account. Don't say you can't even reach out because. That's a lie. Hey, what's your email? If nobody had Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or whatever, what's your email? My email is check out my other videos in the description dot com. <laughs> That's the hell of an email. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Any closing AZ, words? AZ's- Oh, okay. What's up? Or go ahead. I know you've gotten talk shit about me. Go ahead. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your email is I wanna be job I wanna be job rule at gmail dot com. <laughs> See, I already it's know. No lie though. <laughs> he sounds I just like him. <laughs> Stupid. <He does. laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, um, yeah. So I've got um, four. Um, mm, what What do you call them? Womb gremlins um, at my door want my attention. <laughs> but I do want to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do want to say um, thank you so much again. Um Thank you, Tori and AZ, for this opportunity. It's massive. And Amber, I fucking knew you would, having my back, like always, coming on here. Um, <laughs> I love you. And Memo for watching. I love you. And all you guys, all all you guys, the con words and the jackasses, um, you're just... <laughs> the jackasses, you're drawing more attention to the cause and so whatever that's yeah, great I, and you kind people thank you very much and um yeah um i'm willing to to speak to anybody that um that can relate or um needs an ear needs somebody to talk to yep like uh probably have done done it all in my life and i'm not gonna judge a single thing um so yeah um you can you can get my contact info from one of them too. Um, but it sounds like I haven't had a chance to look at all the comments. It sounds like the overwhelming majority of y'all have been wonderful and I really appreciate it. Um, last thing, um, please, all of y'all keep support in this channel. Um, like it, like they've, they have, what literally changed my life and like who I am in a matter of weeks. Um, and they're saving lives, like innocent lives. So keep it coming for them, please. Agreed. That's it. Uh, real quick before you get off, uh, I just want to share some of the comments. We got a bunch of thank you ladies with hearts, a bunch, a bunch. When, when this is all over, I'll be leaving this up so you can check it out. Just hit the video and select live chats. Um, got some you both did amazing from Cass. Uh, love you both. Keeping you ladies in my prayers. Stay strong. Thank you for sharing your stories. You're incredibly brave. Um, thank you all for spreading awareness. Much love. People are definitely, definitely appreciating y'all and, and wanting to share their love with you. So hopefully, oh, they're, 
I gonna know, my Lord. Some love outside of these stream comments and hitting us up for their Facebook accounts to reach out and holler at them without the dumb shit. And they, you already heard they're ready for so expect to get fired back. If you don't get it from me, you gonna get it from them. And then you might get it from me again if I gotta hear about it. Yes, sir. Yeah, That's hit us, right. hit us, hit, hit me and ADO if you want their contact info. We can provide it. It's not going to be posted for obvious reasons because some of y'all are on some fuck shit. And uh, those that donated, I really appreciate you, Big Mad Taco Slurpees. I I want to uh, go ahead and donate it to uh, um, Amber and. Jackie here since they were willing to come here. I know they said they said they didn't want anything, but that's what I'm no, we ahead. no, we said fuck no. Fuck but no. That's what's up. <laughs> okay, but you gave us the platform to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no, without you're not the winning platform, we wouldn't okay. be here. I'm with them, mm -hmm. so fuck you, Thank you. AZ. Thank you, yeah, Tori. Fuck you. And I never fuck thought you. I'd say that, AZ. Please, like yeah, put that exactly. shit in your pocket. Fuck. Fuel up your truck. Do what you do. Keep doing it. Please. Okay, uh, thanks. Do it. Any, do it, motherfucking do it. Okay. All right. Any closing words? Uh, I'm... Uh, uh, any closing words? Hey, just to let you know, Mary Baker gave y'all a bunch, a bunch of kisses. I already know y'all know what's up. <laughs> A bunch of kisses. We love you, Mary, Mary Baker. Baker. Shout out to you. Can we get a? I Thank can't you. see the Thank chat, you. but can we get a, a fuck five brewer in the chat? You know what I'm <laughs> hey, Mary Baker. You know what? You're in cur can we get a fuck, Can life. we get a fuck five so, brewer? And you wait a minute. Uh. Uh, so we really appreciate you showing up and supporting. Um, thank you very much. You you have some strong women in your family, and I'm sure you're yeah. just as strong. God bless you too. Thank you for that, AZ. She's amazing. Uh, my last and words are going to be: always speak your truth and never be silenced, ever. Yeah. Yeah, second that. Right. Unfortunately, no, no, no. sometimes it pulls some people into the fire, but if it's the truth, it's the truth. Yep, it's worth standing for. And fuck some people brewer. were some people were complacent. Yes, girl. <laughs> oh, we got a bunch in here. Oh boy, it's FBB tonight. FBB. Fuck That's awesome. Uh, That's gonna be my day saying hashtag FBB. <laughs> FBB, hallelujah. Can I get an amen? That's gonna be my adv advocacy email address, FBB at <laughs> whatever.com. Girl, well, I'll buy some t shirts that say FBB. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Awesome. Thank uh, you. Thank you guys so much. No, we love right. you guys. Thank you. Likewise. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, when you end, let's keep the chat.